let's move into what we're going to be talking about today. Can we do that? Father in heaven, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness towards us. Father God, I ask that you would lead us and guide us through these troubling times here in America. Father, for they say, when America sneezes, the entire world catches a cold. Thank you for making us a leader in the world. But Father, let us lead with righteousness and truth. Father, I pray for our leaders. I pray for the Democrats, the Republicans, and all the crazy confusion and the nonsense. Father God, you said in your word that where there's confusion, Satan is at work. So Father, I, I, I take authority that you've given me as a kingdom citizen to cast out confusion of this election. Let people hear the truth in their ears and let this country reign, oh God. Father God, so that your missionaries, your ministers can move freely in and out from country to country, state to state to spread your gospel. Father, I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to share my screen with you. So we're talking about the kingdom of God influence. The kingdom influence in the book of Acts. I want to talk about what God intends. And I hope that this message will help you to understand how important it is for us as believers to be involved in our current world and what's going on. Too many people believe that the church has nothing to do with civil government or day-to-day -day lives. Okay, let me tell you, serving God and being God's ambassador is not like being croutons on a side salad. You have your dinner, your main course, and you may or may not have a salad. And you may or may not have croutons. Well, that is not God. God is the main course. God is our source. God wants to be our source, and he is our only source. He is not a side salad or an afterthought. So let's see what the Lord has to say. Uh, let's just go through it, okay? I'm looking for that. All right, so we're talking about the influence of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has no rivals. The kingdom of God, I want, see, the church and the kingdom of God is not the same thing. We're going to get to that. I want you to know that you can be secure in knowing that you are in the kingdom of God and there are no rivals, there are no hindrances. There are no restrictions. The kingdom of God cannot be stopped. You can't contain it. You can't control it. You can't manipulate it. There is nothing you can do to stop the kingdom of God. Even King Darius said, when Daniel came out of the lion's den, that the God of Daniel's kingdom is supreme, and it reigns over every kingdom in the earth. Now, that was from a, a pagan king, an idolatrous king, who did not respect God, but he saw the power of God working through Daniel. Read Daniel chapter 6 and chapter 7. It is phenomenal. Psalms 103, 18 and 19 says, The Lord hath prepared his throne, in all the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Blessed be the Lord. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay. Blessed be the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is, great is his angels. And, and you know what the world is looking for today? Safety security, and peace. Where? In the government. Not in religion, but in the government. And the kingdom of God is a government. God represents a government. <clears throat> he doesn't represent a religion. God wants us to know that there 
are no rivals in his kingdom. Psalms 145 and 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. So here's some things to understand. Jesus, <clears throat> not the pastors, have built the church. Yeah, there are people who say, that's my church. I built that church. No. Well, they're building something. But it's not what God intended. You understand? Because if it was what God intended, it would be doing what God say do. And sometimes people think that they're doing the will of God when actually they're doing what they think it's right and God has nothing to do with it. You see, the devil is very, very cunning. He is very, very sly. He is not going to have you do an evil thing. Most pastors won't do an evil work. But he will have you do a good work, but not the appointed work. You understand? If you were hired in a, in a repair shop as a mechanic, and you spent all day cutting the grass out front of the shop, that's a good work. The grass needs to be cut. But that's not your appointed work. You're supposed to be working on engines. You see, uh, uh, Satan has pastors cutting grass when pastors should be establishing what God established in his kingdom. That's all I'm going to say to that. Jesus, not the pastors, built the church. The church is not the kingdom. You understand that? Write that down. The church is not the kingdom, but it is the agency on earth representing the government of God. Just like the embassy in a foreign country is not the country, but it represents the country power and authority. But you can take a bomb and blow up the embassy, but you won't touch the country. All you're gonna do is start a war. The church is the front office it is not the kingdom. It is the legal agency where people can come in and get their citizenship back. Ecclesia. We see, we hear that word. It's Greek, uh, Latin, for groups of people, groups of ambassadors who represent God's heavenly kingdom on earth. So the church is not the kingdom. It represents the kingdom. You listen. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 7, it tells us of the increase of his government and the peace, there should be no end upon the government of David, upon his kingdom to uh, order it, to establish it with ju ju judgment, justice, henceforth and forever. And the zeal of the Lord shall uh, uh, perform this. Why did Jesus come back? Why, why did Jesus come back? Jesus came to bring you back what you lost. How do you know what you lost? Okay? How, how, how do you know uh, what he brought back? In other words, look at what you lost. What did Adam lose in the garden? Adam did not lose his bishopry. Adam did not lose his, his, his apostleship. Adam did not lose a religious position, praise and worship, none of that. Adam lost his position in God as the ambassador on the earth, he says, have dominion over all the earth. That means have control. God gave mankind operational control on the earth. And when Adam rebelled against God, he lost his position. And when Jesus came back, he brought the government uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You understand? And <clears throat> the government should be upon his shoulders. It's a government. So the kingdom of God cannot be destroyed. No terrorists, no Al-Qaeda, no Hezbollah, no Houthis, no MS-13, no Venezuelan gang can destroy the kingdom of God. 
it told you in Daniel that he was given authority. Look at Daniel 7, 13, and 14, but I'm going to um, just look at verse 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. I don't want you to look at the inflation and the problems around the world and horrible incompetent leadership to think that that is going to influence God to keep his kingdom from reigning on the earth. You represent a kingdom that will never be destroyed, that can never be taken down. It only increases the church, the ecclesia, the groupings of people. The government can pass laws against the church. Can't touch the kingdom of God. It reigns supreme. <clears throat> and this is your position, Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even ever and ever. You just have to understand how important you are. So the kingdom of God is wonderful. Okay. But the kingdom causes conflicts and it exposes the true nature of religion and creates its first conflict. The kingdom of God, preaching the kingdom, solves problems and it causes problems. People who don't understand the authority and the power of the kingdom, when you come preaching it, they get upset. When I preached the kingdom of God in relationship to fasting and prayer, the pastor that I had essentially kicked me out. Oh, he disguised it under, oh, it's time for you to have your own church. No, I knew what you did, and I knew why you did it. You didn't understand and it made you feel uncomfortable because you are a religious person bucking for a position and God is not having none of that because God reigns supreme. And anybody that comes into any group of religion, the kingdom is going to cause problems. Religion has been established in practice since Cain killed his brother Abel. That was a religious ceremony when they offered sacrifices to God. Adam didn't have to do that. And it's been problems ever since. And when Jesus came on the earth, religion has been established for over 2,000 years. And when he walked into the synagogues and the temples, that is where he reached his persecution. That's when he was lied on. The establishment <clears throat> attacked him. Why? Because the kingdom exposed exposes the true nature of religion and they can't stand it. Acts 8, 1 through 2. <clears throat> You're talking about the conflict that the kingdom and the persecution that the kingdom brings. And Saul was consenting into his death. We're talking about the death of the deacon Stephen. And at that time, there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout all the region of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. So, number one, the persecution of the kingdom was from religion. The persecution of the kingdom was from religious leaders. Religious people who followed the religious leaders who didn't have a mind of their own. The sinner was glad to see the kingdom come. Rahab, um, uh, <clears throat> she's in the Old Testament, but um, uh, Je Mary Magdalene, the prostitute, was glad to see the kingdom come. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was happy to see the kingdom come. You understand? Religious people hated the kingdom caused persecution, and Saul was guilty of the blood of the saints. Paul, Saul came through, and he was putting people in prison. He was killing people, and it made the kingdom representatives scatter throughout the entire region. 
And the message in the kingdom power went with the people. Do you remember Acts chapter 1? Where Jesus said that you're going to spread this gospel through all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, and all parts of the earth. Well, after the day of Pentecost, on, on Acts chapter 2, they hung around Jerusalem. <clears throat> Just like any religious movement, if God moves, they stay right there. They try to stay right there. But Jesus did not say stay in Jerusalem and talk about how wonderful Pentecost was. He said, you got a mission. They did not leave until the sword came to persecute them. Mark 7, read that. 7 through 19 is really great. But it says, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines and commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other like things that you do. You hold to it. You go into certain churches. Well, we don't do it like this. Oh, uh, pastor, we don't do it like that. We do it. Well, maybe God want to do this. But because you're so locked in, well, that's how we've been used to doing it. You don't let God move. When persecution came, the church was scattered. Acts chapter 8, verse 3. For Saul made havoc of the church, entering to every house, hauling men and women, committing them to prison. So religion has a lot of zeal against its enemies. There is no one more. So you hear in America, oh, the threat to democracy. Let me tell you who the real threat is to mankind in freedom. A religious person with a bomb thinking they're doing the will of God. That is a dangerous person because they won't think twice about destroying your children. They think they're doing the will of God. Religious zeal is the greatest enemy of the kingdom. Religious zeal is a great enemy. The church cannot be destroyed. But the religion can. You can right right now in in America, there are certain people in Washington D.C. that want to ban the Bible as hate speech. And if they could, they would throw every preacher, evangelist, pastor, teacher in prison. And if America went down that dark path, I wonder how many preachers will say they love Jesus. Oh, my friends, the day is coming. You better be in the kingdom and locked into the power of God because the government on earth can pass legislation to shut the church down. Anybody heard of COVID? What did they try to do? Stop your speech and shut the church down. Men and women equally suffered under the kingdom of God. Uh, 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 they equally suffered. Um, In, in, in the first church, they equally suffered. So you 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 want to understand something. I want you to understand that. Uh, and I'm going to stop right here because, um, yeah, and I'm going to pick this up. I want you to go over uh, this message, check out my references. And, 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 and Matthew 633 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God knows you need a job. You need food. You need medicine. You need shelter. You need clothing. You need all these things. He said, don't worry about it. Don't seek it like the Gentiles seek it. You know, we had during COVID, and even now, smash and grabs, mobs of young people uh, coming into establishments, destroying the place, stealing, just walking brazen out the door they will have their place in the lake of fire if they don't repent this this crime against children in the womb the war against the womb to kill that person in the womb and then when that person is born they want to change its sex let me tell you something god has something to say about this foolishness we can't be 
uh, in religion because religion says, oh, I have nothing to do with that. I'm just going to pray and preach Jesus. You don't even know what the gospel means. That you, The kingdom of God says that we are light and salt in this world. That's right. We are to influence government, our homes, our neighborhoods, our school boards, our school districts, police departments, fire departments with God's righteousness. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything you need is going to be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he's going to make sure the economy comes in line so that you can afford fuel in your car and bread on your table at the same time. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you again next time and we'll pick this up. Bye-bye.